So today I'm welcoming Tony Casandrinos, who is the founder, co-founder of a lovely olive oil company that we'll be talking about today. So when Tony moved often as an active duty Marine, he would share his family's olive oil gifting bottles to friends. And then in 2012, he started gifting bottles at a local CrossFit gym. And it sounds like that was the origin of the idea of a, a business here. So people were fans. They said they couldn't find olive oil like this here in the United States. And at the same time, Tony realized how many olive oil brands were cut with other oils or made from poor quality olives. With the encouragement of friends and family, Tony and his sister Effie decided to bring a little bit of Greece over to America and Casandrinos was formed. So was that in 2012 or when did you start? I started sharing it in 2012. Um, my father owned a Greek restaurant in upstate New York and uh, he'd always bring over enough to sell in the restaurant. And I just happened to have a case in my car one time and we were having, a, I think, a birthday party at the CrossFit gym I was training at. And uh, they were using some olive oil and I brought mine in and people loved it. And they're like, can I have a bottle? I was like, sure, here you go. And kind of snowballed from there. <laughs> like words spread throughout the gym. We we're like a tight knit community. That's kind That's of like awesome. Kelio's getting popular and whatnot. And totally. Yeah. Was like kind of coming into being cool again. <laughs> Yeah, I yeah. think people were hungry for those paleo whole food options and they weren't mainstreamed yet. So yeah, yeah that sounds like perfect timing. But you guys are not in grocery stores, correct? Are you just on your own website? Website, yep. Okay, perfect. Well, tell me more about the all origin of this olive oil. Did your dad have a friend or was it their oh, farm sure. or what had to go? We've uh, been in our family for generations. Um, I just really never thought much of it. I mean, I spent most of my childhood in Greece and I've been going back my whole life. And it was just kind of something that was always there. Cause if you ever go to Greece, like the entire country is olive trees. It's kind of just like what is there everywhere. So, um, when my grandfather passed away, he left us some land and we, um, we basically would harvest the olives and then sell them in bulk. My father would bring over enough for us um and he would sell a little bit at the restaurant but it wasn't like a business on its own at all um so when I started it I kind of didn't even really intend it to be a business it was more just sharing our olive oil with my friends and then I was stationed in Philadelphia at the time while I was in active duty and then I got stationed down in Texas and all my friends in Philly were like we still want the oil I was like I don't know how to give it to you you know so I made a little website and I uh, I asked my dad if he can ship me a bunch. And then when my friends would order it, I would just mail it to them. Gotcha. Kind of snowballed from there to where I was getting like a lot of orders, but I didn't have a lot of time because I was like working, you know, 10, 11 hours a day. So oh, no. I'm like, oh, wow, I got a package like 12 orders, which wasn't a, isn't a lot now. But at the time when I'm doing it, you know, it's like I got a package all the time in the UPS or wherever. And, mail them off so kind of just like snowballed from there then I decided I couldn't do it on my own because I was getting ready to get deployed so I, I talked to my sister I was like hey do you want to start a business with me <laughs> we could do it part-time and when I retire in like six or seven years <laughs> we could do it full-time so uh -huh. we kind of kept it going part-time for its whole most of the time up until last year honestly oh so, wow cool yeah, so we kind of like grew it organically like that. And do you guys press it yourself, like in well, Greece? Or what? Personally, um, so we have, um, you only harvest olives once a year. It happens from uh, early October till the end of February. Um, and we, all of our olive oil comes from one specific little valley in Greece. And uh, family, friends, and workers, we basically harvest um that entire time. And then we bring the olives right to the mill. Now, personally, I wasn't there the entire time throughout my career in the military because I just couldn't get away that long. Um, this past summer, right after I retired, I was there for the whole harvest season, which was cool. Yeah. Um, to be able to just be in Greece for that. Um, but the actual pressing and turning it from olives into olive oil goes 
it happens in an olive mill and it's about an hour long process with a few different stages. Um, starts with like pressing the, uh, or washing the olives and then uh, basically mashing them and then oil. So that process takes about an hour and then from there it goes into bottling and then bringing it back over here to the States. So. Perfect. Have you, you ever, physically <laughs> well, yeah, with machine. your feet. <laughs> um, are you, yeah. <laughs> have you ever heard of the Queen Creek olive mill down here in Arizona? I don't know if you've heard of it. I think I have. I think I've seen it you some should visit here sometime. Or something. Yeah, they're, they don't, um, they mostly sell like on site, but they do sell a little bit. I think, I think they do. Well, I think I've seen them in some stores maybe. Yeah. So I went to their olive fest a couple of years ago and um, they show, yeah, they kind of show us like the process and it was pretty awesome to like learn because yeah, you kind of like, I don't know, same with similar with coffee. I visited a coffee farm last year and you kind of have like a, your imaginary idea of how oh, no. it gets, gets made and then you're like, oh, that's actually how it gets made. Uh, I mean, they talked also what we're going to talk a lot about today is is quality and yep. different things like that. So I, um, I don't know, it'd be interesting if anyone wants to share in the chat, have you guys heard about olive oil being not pure, purely olive oil or perhaps not where, where it says it's from? Um, mm -hmm. Be curious if you guys know, but yeah, the, I, I think I knew some about that, but they expounded upon it when I went to that event. And it's just really sad to me that you know, that's allowed. Can you kind of explain, explain what's going on? Um, well, it's not allowed <laughs> as far oh. as, as far as like a few different things. Um, as far as mixing other oils into an oil and calling it extra virgin olive oil, that's definitely not allowed. That's illegal. Um, and honestly, I can't really speak for whatever other companies do. I don't know of anyone that's personally done it. I've obviously heard stories and whatnot. But what definitely, in my opinion, is the biggest problem with olive oil and the industry, specifically in the United States, is um, most of the oil you find in grocery stores is old, um, just due to the distribution process and the way major corporations um, kind of run the business. Because at the end of the day, they're in it for profit and they're in it to get as much olive oil onto store shelves and push as much of it. Um, so a lot of times they'll say, hey, we're a product of Italy or we're a product of California, but we're buying olive oil from all over the world. You know, So Italy might be buying out of olive oil from Spain or Tunisia and Greece, and then they bottle it in Italy and say, okay, and here's a product of Italy. And we don't know how old this olive oil is because the Spanish olive oil might be a year old. The Tunisian oil might be two years old. Uh, We're going to mix it with the Italian oil, which is this year's harvest. So that's a lot of times you'll see on bottles, they'll only have a, a bottling date and not the actual harvest. Okay. How old is the oil in this bottle? You know, so when you get like a smaller producer that all their oil is singly sourced from one specific area, they'll generally tell consumers, hey, this is the current harvest of olive oil, or this is a 2020 or 19, um, because they take pride in what's in that bottle. Mm. And, and that's really where a lot of times you'll see the price difference in olive oil. It'll be like, well, why is that bottle $20? But I could find that other, another olive oil for $10. The biggest difference is the age and mm. how, um, and that really has a lot of impact on the quality of the olive oil. Um, a lot of the positive properties that make an olive oil healthy, like the polyphenol content and the acidity level, it's degraded over time. Mm -hmm. So the fresher you can get an olive oil, the, the better. Um, so you really wanna really get an oil as soon as you can. Um, but when you're getting in a store, in most cases, it's gonna be a little bit older and there's a, a few other factors that come into play with that as far as how is it um, stored. Um, if it's sitting on a store shelf underneath the light all day long, mm. that will actually oxidize the oil itself. Um, so yeah, there's qu quite a few different factors that come into play for the quality of the oil. Um, 
but the biggest problem is age. Okay. So light when is it like better to have a darker bottle or is that still not really protect it? It definitely protects it. Um, you, we recommend that it's stored inside of your kitchen cupboard as much as we love oh, seeing yeah. on kitchen <laughs> countertops. Um, unless it, you know, it's, unless you're using it a like a little while, you know, but overall, you know, we tell customers to store it inside of their cupboard. You know, okay. You don't want it. And we've actually done tests because um, we do it. The only real way to tell a true olive oil, um, a lot of people say like the fridge test or a taste test. You got to do a chemical analysis on it and analyze mm -hmm. it. Um, okay. When, and we've actually done tests at like as soon as it's pressed and then six months later and then at 12 months and at 24 months. We've also done it where we've stored a bottle inside of a dark space and then left it out. Actually in Las Vegas, we left it out on a kitchen counter, not in direct sunlight, but still out. And um, the one that we left out was degraded. Mm. That, the polyphenol count was down. doesn't mean it's bad. It's just, you know, the properties inside of the olive oil that make it healthy were degraded. So obviously if you're consuming it for health benefits, you want to have the best product possible. Okay. So besides storing it in a dark cabinet, once you crack it open, does it start to degrade faster? Yep. Yeah. We always tell people, um, basically consume it within six months of cracking the bottle open. Okay, so that's not too long of a period. That's yeah, and that's, you know, and we we have all sizes of olive oil, like anywhere from our little travel packets up to like a big three liter package. Um, I pretty much tell people usually get get what order what you can consume in a few months. Um, don't don't buy a big thing of it and store it for two years in your account, and you know, because people yeah. do you know, because a lot of people, and I don't know, I think just because like wine and olive oil kind of go hand in hand, you know, that with the food world, it's not like wine, like it doesn't get better. <laughs> like, you know, a lot. Yeah, that uh, might be one of the few foods that does get better. Yeah, it's wine or, yeah. I, I don't know. There's like a couple. Yeah, I think there's some kind of Chinese. Yeah, there's some there, you know? yeah, there's a few. But I think this is a great awareness because I think people think if they're eating a food that's a healthy food, they don't consider freshness. I see examples of this in my practice too like now we have refrigeration and it's your vegetable can still be green looking for quite a long time maybe it's traveled a week to the store and now it's two more weeks in your fridge like people buy those big tubs of spinach oh, yeah. mm -hmm. and you know some of my clients are single and i'm like mm, don't be still eating that tub of spinach two weeks later you know it's the vitamin c is lost so yeah even though it's more convenient to buy less often and i think we've been trained that way as consumers Mm -hmm. um to buy in bulk and all that it's yeah it's it's not always the best if you think about our ancestors they didn't have this ability to store food no, for definitely. yeah so but i mean and the thing with olive oil too is it will stay good for a long time like it's even three years after it was pressed it's still edible as long as it was sealed and stored properly it's still edible it's just not nearly as good you know i mean you're getting yeah. like, after three years, you're probably getting 30% of the nutrients and polyphenols that you would have been getting if you had it fresh. Yeah. I used to always tease my uh, former mother-in-law on Thanksgiving because we'd be cooking and she'd have these spices that were so old. Like they were as old as me. <laughs> you could see the date when it was produced and I'm like, technically this is still time, but like, <laughs> we're definitely not getting any better but I'm like you know with some things you don't use a lot you think well you know mm -hmm. so it's just good to have a word I think technically spices you should really only you should use between the three to six months too from some yeah. people I've interviewed and that's tough but yeah just buy smaller quantities even if you're not quite hitting that like try to try mm -hmm. to think about not you, know, you don't buy those spices and those big giant things for no. sure yeah we uh I mean it's just part of it you know a lot of people want to just keep a bunch stocked up all the time but which is good for some things like paper products or <laughs> <laughs> yeah things are not eating you know, paper if you want to hoard that or you know whatever but when it comes to certain foods like yeah you definitely 
Yeah, fresh food is good. So one thing you mentioned I thought was interesting, I want to just kind of talk about benefits because you said the acidity is a, is a benefit. And I think people might think, oh, how, how is that? Is that what you said? The acidity level. Um, okay, tell us more about that. Yeah. So that's how a olive oil is gauged. If it's at 0.8 or below acidity level when they do the chemical analysis and the testing, it's considered an extra virgin olive oil. Okay. Uh, that's just the acidity level. That's not really what makes it healthy or not. Okay. Yeah. But there is a wide variety of olive oils, um, mainly because they come from different kinds of olives. So there's a lot of things that'll come into play on how healthy an olive oil is based on its polyphenol count, um, which will have to do with the kind of olive that's used, um, the temperature of how it was grown, the weather, the how much it rained that year. I mean, there's a lot of things that come into play on what an olive oil is going to eventually come out and taste like and how healthy it will be, even though I think the vast majority of them are going to be healthy. Um, but the difference between a point, say seven acidity level olive oil and a point two is a big difference in taste. Okay. So, but just because you see extra virgin olive oil doesn't necessarily mean it's, you know, the uh, the best tasting or healthiest olive oil out of all of them. And the thing is, you can have an extra virgin olive oil, say today that tests at maybe a 0.5 or 0.6. But when you test it two years down the road, now it's not an extra virgin anymore. Oh, because of the time. Okay. And okay. the acidity level actually goes up over time. Okay. Okay, interesting. Also the taste profile. So that's why if any of uh, the listeners or you heard like where um, uh, there was like a few tests done of grocery store olive oils and they tested them and said, these are fake. They're not really extra virgin olive oil. It wasn't so much from the tests that I've seen that they were fake or mixed with other things. It's that on the label, it said extra virgin, but when they tested it, it was only a virgin olive oil because the acidity level was over the threshold to be considered an extra virgin. Okay. okay. But that was due to time, you know, so. Okay. I mean, you said a lot of the big manufacturers are using older lots of oil. So they do. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, oh yeah, over time. I mean, it, it's cheaper, you know, when you got these companies that are buying, you know, thousands of tons of olive oil and yeah. buying them in like plastic bottles and selling them to your local lower budget stores, you know, and that's where you're going to find your six, $7 bottles of olive oil because it's just cheaper all around. Yeah, exactly. So one thing I noticed when I was tasting at this place I mentioned to you is the, the yeah, the kind of the extra virgin, like first press seem to me to have more of an olive taste oh, yeah. down the road. I'll, you're not going to like that. I, I'm about to say this, but olives are like one of the few foods I don't like. <laughs> like I only don't like like three foods. So I don't really like the taste of like extra virgin olive oil or, you know, some of the ones there. I kind of prefer one that's a little milder. So am I getting less health benefits or not necessarily? No. Um, so olive oil is kind of like wine in the sense that there's lots of different kinds of olives, just like there's lots of kinds of grapes and they will produce different tasting olive oil, you know? So everyone's going to, if I were to share 10 different bottles of olive oil with you from 10 different regions of the world and 10 different olives, some are going to be a lot grassier and you'll literally taste like a grassy taste to it. Some will be spicy, some might be bitter, some could be buttery, some could be uh, like peppery. So, but then again, I mean, everybody's got a different palate and I've had people say, oh, your olive oil is very spicy or, oh, it's very mild, you know? So everybody's different. And that's yeah. really where I think, um, you know, and I tell us people all the time, like I try different olive oils. I mean, I like different, you know, even though I have an olive oil company and I've got like infinite amounts for myself, um, I still like trying other ones and with different foods, you might try different oils, you know, like there's some olive oils I like on fish 
for say with mayo, for example, you don't want a very strong olive oil because it's going to overpower it, you know, so you might want a, uh, a much milder olive oil. Um, so yeah, it doesn't really mean that it's not healthier. Okay. For, just, just uh, maybe more look for like the sourcing or the freshness more than like the flavor. Perhaps. Yeah. Well, not so much the sourcing. It's actually the kind of olive that it comes from is really going to determine the taste the most. Okay. Um, but how about health benefit? Same, like what type of oil or more than it goes to age or? So as you're scrolling down through here, you'll see the, go down a little more, the antioxidants. Um, so different olives are higher in antioxidants and polyphenols than other, than other olives. So a lot of times when you get that like bittery, spicy aftertaste, that's generally a, a high polyphenol count. Um, oh, okay. Interesting. So you right now, it looks like you have one, you just have one um, type of olive oil. You don't have like several. Mm -hmm. right? No, nope. one kind of okay. olive. different okay. packaging sizes. Like you see in that picture, we've got a variety of different sizes and we actually have quite a few more than that. Um, but, um, yeah, we have different sizes, but it's only one oil. Like we don't sell, okay. it's just our single pressed olive oil. Yeah. Well, tell us about the taste of yours in particular. Well, for me personally, cause again, people right. have different palates and I've heard <laughs> multiple different things, um, you know, from different kinds of people. I, I definitely think it, it has a peppery spicy aftertaste, um, it comes from a Kornecki olive, which is actually a really tiny little olive okay. that you never eat. It, it doesn't taste good to eat it, it, but it makes really good olive oil. <laughs> and but it's it's known to be one of the highest concentrated polyphenol olives in the world. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah, we'll talk more about health benefits in, in a minute. But like, you know, I want to kind of help people navigate this. It's funny. My I went with a friend to the olive mill, and she was like, well, "Let me just taste one off the tree." <laughs> You should have seen her face. <laughs> she tasted it it's like so bitter. It's not good at all. Uh, yeah. So just okay. Aside of from olive oil, like olives themselves, there's tons of different kinds of varieties of olives. Like you got the little ones, big ones, black ones, green ones. Um, there's certain ones that are really good for olive oil and not so good for eating. And there's some that are really good to eat and taste good but don't make good olive oil at all. Um, that being said, to make any olive like really edible, there's kind of like a, uh, you gotta make them edible. So they actually, you soak them in water and then salt water and you kind of do that for a few weeks going back and forth. And then what they do in America is put them in brine. Mm. So if you go and buy olives at the grocery store, they're in brine and um, that's really not done that much in Greece. Generally we'll like marinate them in olive oil and spices. So okay. I personally don't really like olives in America that much. I like them in Greece a lot better. Different so we're actually yeah. gonna be bringing them over here to the States. Um, and if you notice like actually in that picture right there you'll see there's some green ones like inside the basket, uh -huh. and some uh, purplish ones. That's the same exact olive, it's just you'll see a tree and it'll have different color olives depending on the ripeness of them. Um, we press them all at the same time, except for our early harvest, they're generally more of a green color as opposed, but they still make, you know, same olive oil. It's just, they turn colors. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I think this is helpful. Yeah. These are hard too. They're not like the olives you get, you know? In yeah. You would never, like, if you were to bite one of these, it's disgusting. <laughs> it's really disgusting. It's like very, very yeah. bitter. You wouldn't, you wouldn't eat these olives. They make so great. You'll, you'll sell olives on like same site, same brand at some point or different. We not. We are. So here's the thing. They take a lot of work. Um, and I'm, I'm trying to convince my dad to make them. Um, we're actually doing a test batch next month. Um, cause it's a lot of work that goes into okay. So I shouldn't Maybe. be promising people that all of Yeah, don't promise them, but I would say it's about a 90% chance they'll be ready by about April. Because okay. it, it takes a few months to get them ready. Um, and then the longer you let them marinate, the better. 
And uh, when they're ready, I'll send you some. You might like olives after that. Okay, yeah, we'll see. I, I spent a couple of weeks in Portugal and they'll give you olives every time you sit down at the table. And I was, I was like, mm, no. Uh, I know they're so good. I've been listening to this book about brain health and he keeps encouraging people to eat olives. It's kind of mm. this high fat diet. And I'm like, mm. um, <laughs> but yeah. I, with I mean, that, it only, almost turns them into mush. Like they just like, it's a very different consistency. Yeah, I like it with the oil. Yeah, at this place they stuff them sometimes too, which is fun. So we put a couple coupon codes in the chat. I think there's like a bigger coupon code, 50% off if you subscribe and if a one-time purchase, you put mm -hmm. in a different code for 25% off. Is that correct? Yep. Okay, yep. so Actually, don't use this code. Use the code we gave you. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah, and yeah, people can either do the subscribe and save, and then it's 50% off the first order, or they can just try it for one time. I mean, you can cancel any time if they do a subscription. Um, the the reason we generally do the, as a small business, like that brings over a fresh product, it really helps us to have the subscription model because one, we can really forecast how much we bring over because um, we bring it over quarterly. Like every quarter we're bringing oh, okay. over different degrees. That's another thing, like what a lot of companies do is they'll bring over like mass amounts and then it gets distributed out to distribution centers and then it makes its way into stores. That's and we try, so we try and just be like, cut that and make it as streamlined as possible and just be right to the customer, so. Yeah, I like that, okay. So yeah, let's talk more about health benefits. It's such a traditional food. I'm, how many thousands of years or would it be? How long has olive oil been being produced? Thousands of years. I mean, nobody has like a set. Okay, it's, it's four. Years. And I yeah. mean, before biblical times. I mean, it's it's been yeah. a long time. Um, they, and everybody like fights over who has the oldest living olive tree. Like some people say it's in Lebanon. Others say it's in like Israel or Egypt. But it's, it's been thousands of years. And the, the process really, it's pretty interesting. Um, it hasn't really changed much except from going from stones and donkeys being used for <laughs> to, to move the stones um, to now being mechanic done by machines. Um, the process itself hasn't really changed much. It's just much more yeah. efficient. It's and a lot cleaner now. Yeah, that's so great. So yeah, this is a good page with some of the, the benefits. Um, we're just talking about this brain health book I'm reading, inflammations, you know, pretty mm -hmm. rampant here in the States. Antioxidant benefits. I was just telling a friend, I should do like a whole summit on antioxidants because I think it's such an interesting topic that we don't fully understand. You know, mm -hmm. they're so powerful actually. Um, really yeah. good for detoxing too. Um, having those antioxidants, blood sugar balancing is also great, especially in our country. You know, these two reasons over here is why we have a lot of COVID. <laughs> you know, poor blood sugar handling, inflammation. It's so simple. You know, I think so people are still, use, uh, many Americans are still using, you know, uh, canola oil or whatever and the plastic thing. I know my audience isn't really using that stuff, but many people still are. So, um, you may be using olive oil at home, but you didn't really know, you know, how to choose. So hopefully you learned some things about that process. Um, yeah. And even restaurants too, like, cause. Oh yeah. When you eat out. Mm -mm. Using the cheapest fats available. Yeah. It's one of my pet peeves. I'm sure you've noticed, like if you go to the deli at Whole Foods or whatever, it's like. Oh, canola oil. Yeah. They're like, uh, what do they call it? Expeller pressed canola oil. Is it that makes it better? It's GMO free. It's like, what? Yeah, it's, you guys charge an arm and a leg too. Like, use some better oil in there. So, you know, if people are allergic or sensitive to it, it's, you, you're still, you're disclosing, but at least you're not just feeding them crap. So, yeah, yeah it's so frustrating. Definitely frustrating. Best to just do it yourself at home. And that's so, why we have those single serving packets because a lot of people bring them to lunch with them and we'll use that on like a salad. Not that we're really going out to eat that much anymore, but um, it's kind of like an on the go type of thing. So you can put healthy olive oil. Yeah. Um, instead of the dressing. Yeah. And I was just, and you, you know, Connie from Sunlighten, have you met her? Mm -hmm. 
Uh, yeah, we were just interviewing with her and uh, she's still a little bit of a fat phobic and <laughs> I was talking to her about ways to use fat. And I'm like, just think about like, you know, you don't have to think about, I don't, my personal philosophy is you don't think you have to think about going keto or necessarily just think about like adding more fat to your diet. So topping your food all the time with with, with butter or olive oil or, you know, like hemp seeds, like just always think about adding fat to whatever you're doing. When, when it's high quality fats like this, you're going to get uh, a lot out of it. So we had one question coming on the chat. How long does it take from the time olive oil comes off the tree till it's bottled and ready to sell? We do it right away. Like it happens. So it's, um, so in, in the Valley where our olive oil comes from, we have a mill, which is a co-op. So like everybody in that valley uses it. The cool thing about it is that whole valley is certified organic, which is very, oh, wow. um, so we're not getting run off from our neighbors or anything. And there's like mountain ranges on both sides and a, the a GNC on the other. Um, but uh, it, once harvest season starts, it's basically a 24 seven operation with everybody is in their fields picking olives and we, we handpick them, unlike a lot of bigger corporations that use machines to drive over the trees with tractors and shake them. So everything's like handpicked. Um, and uh, we basically go right to the mill. So we, we do one tree, it takes about 20 minutes to get all the olives off of a tree. And as soon as that's bagged, it goes right to the mill and it's pressed. And that basically just happens nonstop. In hours or whatever. Yeah. yeah. That really will, there, there's a lot of things. We talked about the age and kind of like how you store the oil, but a big part of how it tastes is what happens in the first few hours of it being picked. Mm. You, um, you don't, what you got to understand is it's a fruit. So it's kind of like a fruit juice, you know? So imagine an orange being picked you don't want to let it sit around for hours and hours or days. You know, you want to basically turn that into orange juice right away. Um, same thing with the olives. You know, you want to pick them, turn them into olive oil, and then get them bottled. So it's um, it's pretty much as fast as it could possibly happen, which is generally within an hour. That's awesome. I like this graphic kind of doing a comparison. And another mm -hmm. reason we partnered with you guys is because of the organic aspect there's another company doing a subscription but you know it's probably clean but it's not certified organic and i know my audience really prefers to know that you know i think it's yeah well it makes a big difference because unfortunately in the olive oil industry actually probably almost every fruit and vegetable um they spray chemicals on them and um you know, it is what it is. Uh, an olive is a very porous little fruit mm. <laughs> and anything you're spraying on the outside of that tree to keep it, you know, bugs off it and to, to make it, um, grow more olives. It's going to, um, go inside of the oil. I mean, it goes inside of the olive, you press the olive. Now you got the juice of the olive. Well, guess what's inside of that juice mm. the pesticides that were sprayed on it. So, that's why, I mean, me personally, like if I didn't have my olive oil company at all, and I have the knowledge that I do about the industry, I would never touch a non-organic oil. Mm. Um, yeah, it's interesting when you get up close to some of these industries. Mm -hmm. um, I lived for a year in a rice farming village in South America, and they have chemicals there that were banned in the U.S., and so we sell them to them, and <laughs> then we go buy the rice back. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. But, you know, it, it's just like they've been sort of fed this, this story from, frankly, a, a lot of, you know, Western marketing about what they need to grow their crops. And they're spraying it with horrible stuff. They're getting cancers. Like, it was crazy, the stories that I heard about how illness increased when they started to, you know, take on all these practices. And then, yeah, who's consuming these products? We are back in the U.S. So. Uh it's a never ending cycle, you know, it's like, yeah, it's, it's a mess, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. So we just go organic. Yeah. And I love that you have the little packets. I have thought about putting them as like a freebie when we mark, when our customers buy things, or I could even put together a little sample 
box of different samples. A friend of mine just came up with his sleep formula and a sample size. I love sample sizes. <laughs> Everything, they're just more fun. So we may, we may do something with that. But I wanted to mention too, this is great for gifting. You know, it's Christmas time and, you know, it's just like you could get someone, whatever. Like this is, a, they can use it. It's not, it's, you know, it's not maybe something they'll be like, oh, thanks and put it away. It's just like a high quality food. So when I mentioned that olive farm I went to, man, I spent so much money buying all these <laughs> olives and olive oils. Cause it's like, it's just a nice, it's That's cool, unique, nice gift. Gift. especially even for yeah. like dinner parties or, I mean, not that people oh, are doing true. that much right now, you know, but instead of bringing a bottle of wine, you can bring out a bottle of olive oil. Yeah, it's memorable. I think it's a great idea. Yeah, well, I, you know, sets it apart a little bit. Yeah, definitely. Well, I'm really happy we learned your story and just learned more about olive oil. Any last minute questions from anyone on the webinar or anything we missed, Tony, you want to share? I think that's about it. Yeah, if anyone has, ever has any other questions, I mean, you can just reach out to us via our email or on yeah. or Facebook or any any of that fun stuff. So the coupon codes are my initials, CD, and then 50 for subscribe and save 50% off and the V25 for a single, uh, a one-time purchase. You don't have to buy just one, but um, yeah, perfect. And we'll, we'll keep in touch. We've been doing more with recipes lately, which people love. So um, yeah, I would love to just kind of keep in touch with you guys and, and uh, just keep sharing what you're up to. Definitely. Well, thanks for being on, Tony. It's been nice to meet you. Thanks to everybody who's on live as well. And I think, what do we have next week? Oh, we're doing a bit of a food theme lately because it's the holidays. Last week we had Autumn from Paleo Valley. Do you know her? Yeah, I was actually just with uh, Christina from Paleo Valley. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, well. And then next week we're having Mira Desi. He, she, she's called the ingredient guru and she talks mm -hmm. a lot about chemicals and food and kind of reading labels. So um, yeah, it's kind of a fun, fun food theme this time of year. So you can look forward to that next week, everybody. And uh, thanks for being here. Bye.